Well, welcome everybody to Lovershire Meadow. Uh, my name is Andy, I'm one of the ecologists at the club. So Lovershire Meadows, the place where we are now, was uh, a very important addition to our suite of Upper Ray reserves. Um, I presume sort of some of you know about places like Gallows Bridge Farm and Long Herden Meadows, some of the really nice ones. So we're just touching the bottom corner of Leach's Farm. One of our fields here was a local wildlife site, which means that at some point in the past, it had been identified as not having been destroyed basically by ploughing. There was still some residual interest in the flora and the fauna. Um, and that was okay, but it had been degraded a little bit. The two fields that came down from that were sort of uh, increasingly degraded. So this one was terrible, as I mentioned earlier. The middle one was, mm, the top one was quite nice but none of them anything like our next field, which is the bottom of Leach's Farm, which is a fantastic species rich, beautiful flower meadow, certainly at this time of year, looking its absolute best. So that's our kind of aspiration for the top field at Luggershaw, the one that was already quite good. We are hoping by some sensitive restoration, we can make that even better and get it to look a bit more like our ground at Leach's Farm and Grange Meadow and Long Herden and some of the other beautiful triple SI parts of the upper road. So when we stand here, we can see the old ridge and furrow system that was underneath these fields. So if you look up, quickly turn around, can you see the strips of colour? So the buttercups are sitting on the tops of the ridges and the more lush green grasses, although it's all the same height at the moment, but they're sitting down in the furrow. When we walk across there in a minute, you will <laughs> get that. The ridge is where you're going to be able to grow your cereal crops or sort of your wheat and your barley and then down in the slightly wetter slightly more marginal bits that's where you're going to be growing your oats or your peas or beans or whatever it might be because they're a bit more tolerant of the waterlogged soil so it's like a it is a snapshot of an old bygone agricultural system whereby each strip probably belonged to one or maybe they had two but one family would have just a couple of strips through the field and they were responsible for that year on year So we'll enlarge some of these farms, so we'll make a bit more wetland habitat. So, like, obviously important at the ray are things like wading birds. So we've got curlew in various fields, a lot of overwintering snipe. We've had red shank breed at Gallows Bridge again this year. So there is wader interest, and if we can do a bit more to these fields, then we're certainly improving breeding opportunities, but we're definitely improving wintering opportunities for some of these wading birds. We've seen the meadow pipit here, there's a rebunting nesting somewhere around this bit of scrub just here. There's also dragonflies that are attracted to the pond. We've seen a couple of species already this morning when they came out. So already this is quite a wildlife hotspot in this field and if we can do a bit more of this by spreading out the, the wet ground and putting in some scrub on some of the slightly like, drier places then we're going to get a big uplift in the amount of wildlife that's able to use these fields. So, having said that we've got a bit of a free canvas, we can't completely ignore the fact that we've got a super rare creature that we've got a responsibility to do some work for. So, the black hair streak is reliant on blackthorn plants, uh, but mature tall blackthorn plants in a hedge. Its relation, the brown hair streak, is reliant on the sucker growth of blackthorn that comes out from the edge of the hedge into the field. We've also got, we've heard them a little bit already, the meadow pipits in the hedge. We've got reed buntings, we've got white throats, we've got linnets, yellow hammers, all of those sorts of birds are using the hedgerows. So we do have to have to make sure that we sort of manage this bit of the site responsibly as well. But hopefully what we're really looking for is to start seeing black and brown records come up in here and that will show that they're moving through the network of hedges on Luggershaw. I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who supported the appeal at Luggershaw. Um, it's been great to see how well this site's developed over the past two years um, and really looking forward to seeing how things develop in the coming years as we undertake a programme of works across these fields. <laughs>